so it takes some time. Um, the main concept behind that is that you, uh, when you're training your um, classification scheme, you're using AORIs to separate forest from water and urbanized or bitterized um, areas or streets from other bodies. And due to this um, making a shape or whatever, you will make some failures in your in, in your drawing of the shape, and you will always cover maybe one or two pixels in your area of interest that are not part of the class. And um, especially, okay, water bodies are really good to distinguish between. So you only have five pixels in your in the areas of your uh, of your um, water bodies that are afterwards part of the urban class using the minimum distance file or the minimum distance classifier but let's keep that open and see what is happening when we are using the contingency table with the maximum likelihood classifier once again go for that and yeah just to show you the other values so um we have one idea um regarding the separability of the suburban and urban or the urbanized classes and you can also see them here so um you have a big overlap in these both um in these three classes here so you have dense urban which is uh, 27 percent part of the urban class and so on so you have three major um areas where they can belong so also fields which is quite unuseful for future analysis. But um, having a look on the ma a maximum likelihood classifier, you can see that is um, that is performing much worse because the water class here um, is producing 214 pixel as part of the dense urbanized area. So um, the job of this is uh, not that good. But in the other way around, the class of and the class of dense urban areas is um, much better here. As you can see, 67% of the dense urban area, which was part of the uh, uh, which was part of the reference data, was afterwards also in the dense urban class. And in this case, we only have 34%. So. Um, you have to be very careful in, in judging which uh, which classification um, scheme is better. But in the end, you can probably say, okay, maybe just compute uh, the correct classified data and making uh, making a mean of it, and so you can make sure which is in overall the better uh, approach to produce a classification scheme. So this is one. Oh, this is the second part, and the most uh, mostly used part is um, to go with the accuracy assessment. What is that for? So normally you are not only using it as imagine, you will also go out in the field and have some kind of uh, reference data you can use to provide some information about your area, and not only the the um, the um, the um, Landsat image, which was maybe two years old or is two years old uh, before you will work on the project. So we will go for that um, with the accuracy assessment, and normally you will go, go out in the field, search for search for a special location, mark it with the GPS, and say, okay, you have your your catalog of classes, and you will classify this area of about 900 square meters as a certain class we will go we will do that using the accuracy assessment and therefore first we have to combine this table with a classified image therefore we will use the maximum likelihood classifier and in the end we will create random points and this is we will create random points all over the scene so we will start maybe with 200 we will um um just create a lot of random points and as you can see here class well class values are still blank and also reference values so first um we have to um, see our class values and as you can see there are some classes containing the or there are some points 
that are with uh, assigned with the class value zero, and the problem is that the um, accuracy assessment is producing not only uh, points here in the covered scene, but also in this area here, where, which is um, totally blank, and so you have not a class assignment. Therefore, we will um, just make a right click here in the point values, and in every kind of table in Atlas Imagine, you can probably choose criteria. And this is standard SQL, so you will use the class values, which is the same as zero to um, identify every ID or every reference pixel um, using this information. So we will select that. And as you can see here, it's probably done. And we will just delete the selection. And in the end, we will have only points that are in our scene. So what is the normal way to do that? So you will... Um, we have to view it in another viewer to search for um, the real class behind that. So therefore, we will open the um, the original data, and we will select a viewer to view these points. So we will show this selection view show current selection, and as you can see here, there are so certain points in the area. Which are now, um, which we can now uh, evaluate. But um, go for that ID number 18. Um, you have to assign a class number. So keep in mind that we have normally just eight classes. So why is that class number 12? You will get that information just by clicking in the minimum distance file. We will. Um, oh no, we are using the maximum likelihood. So, maximum likelihood, oh, where are you? There we go. And raster, and having a look in the attributes. So, there's some kind of ghost classes, I maybe call them. And as you can see here, there's the color of these ghost classes is zero. So, you will have that. And there's no class name assigned. So, um, Class number six means that we are here in the pixel value of six, and this is probably grass. And is that class ID number 18 is belonging here? It's class number nine. Looking in the attribute table, class number nine, I said, so this is field number two. Yeah. Normally, you will switch that off, so you will hide the class values and just looking in the attribute table and search for the pixel. So this is AD, ID 18, and probably it is field number 2. So it's class number 9. Go with that, and as you can see here, now the color of this point has changed, that you can differentiate between points you have already um, searched for and points that are still uncovered with information. So there's another point, ID number 13. This is probably grass. So class number six, I think. Yeah. And it was ID number 13, ID 13 class number six. So you will go on with that for a lot of points, as you can see here. I will do it in, in some minutes, and um, I will show you the uh, results in the next video.